Albert's. That's our word. We're your hosts, Jim Jesus and Nick Hazelton from the Anarcho Yakitalism Podcast. The Albert's is covered by a Bipcot no government license. It allows use and reuse by anyone except state governments. You can learn more at bipcot.org. We're connected to the magic of theme phone, which is why we sound better than podcasts using Skype or even Google Hangouts. Gross. You can learn more at themephone.com, music by 3 uh, until our music composer finally makes something pretty for us. So, how are you today, Nick? I'm doing fantastic. All right, so it's been uh, it's been raining here, which is awesome. We the West Coast, you know, we have a drought, and I and I love that it's raining. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm I live in the desert, so I know all about droughts. <laughs> um so, yeah, a lot of my uh, listeners here on the Lullbirds come from my YouTube channel and not so much from the Freedom Fiend. So they're probably totally unfamiliar with you and what you're about. Do you want to just give a quick intro? Who you sure. are, what you're I, about? Yeah, I'm Nick Hazelton, the Anarcho Yakitalist. I run a podcast called the Anarcho Yakitalism Podcast. Uh, it's anarcho capitalism, but with more yaks. <laughs> so just instead of cap and capitalism, it's yak and yakitalism. And uh, mostly what I talk about is philosophy. I get pretty deep with it. Uh, we've gone over some very interesting things it, from philosophy to farming. I had Jim Jesus on. Well, it was a long time ago, actually. It was like probably almost a year ago. We talked about a lot of things, but mostly uh, anti-tribalism, which was really interesting. Mm -hmm. I, I try to cover a lot of things on the show. If, if I think it's cool, then I'm going to put it on. But uh, I do mainly focus on farming and or not farming i don't do hardly anything in farming mostly on philosophy but the stuff that you have done on farming i found fascinating which it doesn't seem like a topic that would seem fascinating at all but a 17 year old yak farmer anarcho-capitalist that's 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 kind of something obscure it's it's kind of a niche market there <laughs> am i right yeah it, it is uh i think i'm the only anarchist yak farmer and i think i am the youngest I'm I'm not sure about that, but probably am. Yeah, there's probably some up there in Nepal, you know, with oh, all those crazy true. Ch Chinese, yeah, yeah, and or anarchists, little communes up there. Who knows? Um, yeah, yeah. So, anyways, uh, to philosophy, like, what what is your position on philosophy? I know that you've changed since we've talked about a year ago, <laughs> and you basically fell off the nihilist bandwagon, you traitor. Uh, <laughs> what happened? What's going on here? Uh, yeah, so nihilism <laughs> just kind of sucks. I, I don't. I, I used to be really big into nihilism because I like to make people mad. I like to troll people, and that's super fun. And nihilism does have its place. I think that it's really important to be skeptical, and I think nihilism is the only way you can really truly be skeptical. So I think it's it's still a valuable uh, thing to have in in my back pocket, but. I don't call myself a nihilist anymore because I don't think it's very practical. I don't think it's practical to doubt that reality exists and that our senses uh, may deceive us or whatever. You know, to doubt logic in and of itself is not useful. So I side more with objectivists. I don't like to call myself an objectivist either Phew. because I disagree with a lot of things and I don't like Anne, Ron Anne Rand. But uh, I would say that in epistemology, and metaphysics, the deeper philosophical branches, I, I am pretty much an objectivist now. All right. So th what is the gist of that then? You're, it's kind of more like egoism, am I right? That's, that's uh, kind of it. <laughs> that's ethics. Yeah, that's okay. where we get, yeah. But basically, I build off of the, the axioms. I, there, you told me, or no, I said I wasn't going to drop any epistemology bombs, but saying the word axiom is an epistemology bomb. <laughs> uh, axiom is... A, uh, no, I'm a, totally fine with that. It just We don't want to just like talk yeah, monotone sure, okay. about epistemology, <laughs> and we don't want to sound like a Mises.org book, that's for sure. But uh, no yeah. no offense to that. I mean, it has its place, but this is not the Lulverts. <laughs> that's definitely not <laughs> what we're going to do. But go ahead. Yeah, so I would side with the axioms that the objectivists hold. I can't remember all of them off the top of my head, but the main one being uh, A is A, the law of identity, and then I believe the law of, of contradiction is in there as well, but I I'm confused on some of it. I haven't gone back there in a while, but basically I build off these things that are supposedly untouchable truths. That's where you know nihilism and objectivism differ, right? Nihilists would say there is no such thing as an untouchable truth, because there is no truth. But the axioms, or the the objectivists and myself would make, I guess, a leap of faith on these axioms and then build off 
our understanding of reality from there. Yeah. See, I, I'm more, I'm more of an ethical nihilist than I, than I am anything else. Like the, that whole, that whole field, like I'm still kind of getting new to philosophy because I'm kind of unprogramming myself from a certain internet philosopher uh, who, who basically, I'm just unlearning everything because everything that I've learned from this was just absolutely terrible. And the more I've learned, the more I realize how much I didn't know about the whole subject. And and I started getting into ethical nihilism, and I haven't really touched anything else outside of ethics because uh, it seems like ethical nihilism is just a fun position. Not only that, but like you said, it's fun to troll people with. Really fun to troll people with. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, but I don't take it from the position like, oh, I'm going to troll somebody, you know. So I'm going to take this position. It just it seems like that was a little bit made more sense to me that there is no objective morality. Uh, you know, that everything is just basically yay, um, you know. Yay, charity, or boo, murder. I mean, that's all it seemed like to me, so. Yeah, and I would totally hold that position still. I'd, I'd say I'm a relativist when it comes to ethics, and I think that the objectivists are as well, with uh, rational egoism, mm-hmm. or the consequentialist sort of thing. Yeah. So, I don't know. Yeah, nihilism What's has up? its fun, though. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> so, um... Uh, what else have you been talking about recently? I mean, I'm I mean, starting to go over a lot of the stuff that you had in your podcast, trying to get an idea of where you've where you've uh, where you've left the boat, you traitor. <laughs> so, what else have you changed your mind on recently? Because it's been it's been a year, and a lot has changed on your podcast. That's for sure. Yeah, that's man, that's interesting. I have to now. I have to think about what I've recently done. The most recent thing I've put out. Uh, has been it's I'm um, midway editing through editing a series I did with Daryl Becker on the trivia method. Who is and that? I don't, <laughs> I don't know who that is. I don't know who that is. Uh, Daryl Becker is uh, he's the professional podcast guest. That's what I'm calling him now. Okay. Uh, he is amazing at doing shows with people. He he's been on School Sucks podcast a lot. Okay. That's where I found him. He's oh. an interesting guy. Believes in uh, he practices Eastern medicine, I think. Hmm. Half of it's heebie jeebie and half yeah. of it's needle. <laughs> I was gonna, I was no, gonna say he, that, but I wanted to think of a polite way to say that. I don't want to insult your guests and then no, I'm like, I'm, why were you talking to that Jim Jesus troll <laughs> talking about nihilism and how I'm practicing heebie jeebie? Go ahead. <laughs> no, I'm teasing him. I, I think okay. it's an interesting thing. I know nothing about Eastern medicine, but I, I think that he's a legitimate guy. I, I appreciate the work he's done and, and everything. And I'm, I want to interview him on the acupuncture and stuff he does. Mm. <laughs> Biting my lip. And <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know what? Like the whole alternative medicine thing, that's just, that's very very mild compared to some of the things that we've been seeing lately, um, you know, with libertarians. So it's like, I don't care. I'm at the point now where it's like, where I hear people talk about nine 11 truth. And I'm just like, I don't care anymore. Like <laughs> whatever, like uh-huh. I've heard some way crazier things and I just, I don't even care anymore. So anyway, yeah. Alternative medicine. Totally yeah. I'll just tune out that. for a couple seconds and wait for you guys to talk about something. <laughs> <laughs> next. Yeah. I don't know what else I've been doing on the show though. I think I, I think I did a time management thing with a, a lady called named Kathy Payne. She has Broad Rivers Pastures out in Georgia. That was an interesting show. Mm-hmm. Trying to, I'm, I don't know. I guess what I'm, I'm shooting for is, is uh, trying to get things down so that they're practical. I don't like doing a whole lot of things that are just like up in the air, like. That's why I don't like nihilism, right? Is that it doesn't it, you don't get anywhere by arguing nihilism. You really don't. Mm. And so that's why I try and focus on things that are more practical. <laughs> We're gonna fight, so <laughs> <laughs> those are fighting words. Oh, yeah, them are fighting words. No, but um, as as far as the nihilism goes with me, like I, I don't see like in a, a point to say like oh yeah, well you know let's try to find some objective truth in 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 these things like yeah like I don't think it's a good idea to murder people and I sure as heck don't want to be murdered myself but I can I say that it's like some objective truth that murder is always wrong no it just seems that way <laughs> you know so I don't I don't think there yeah. really is but I mean we we can we can kind of say like oh, you know what it seems like everybody kind of disagrees with that and we don't want that i think we can all agree to that so maybe we should try to not to do that sort of thing then ap sounds like a great idea let's try to at least 
take some semblance of it, but I mean, you just can't say that it's objectively true. And I've actually ha- had people tell me that the NAP is the only, or was it? He said it's the only objective moral axiom. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> that's, that's, I think that's going a little bit too far. Yeah. But. It's interesting how they, they justify it through argumentation ethics. That's an interesting mm-hmm. argument, and I don't like it. Um, I don't know how to explain it well enough, and I don't, yeah, I'm don't. i not going to even try and build a straw man for that. Uh, but I think that what it comes down to is I, I'm a consequentialist, right? And that's where nihilists usually fall is that we're going to do what's going to benefit ourselves and the people around us because we care about the people around us right Mm -hmm. and that's got to be it's not i'm not going to say that's objective but that's pretty much where everybody uh acts and that can be based in scientific evidence with natural selection right i think that's a much stronger argument than the non-aggression principle is right because axioms and shit Mm. oh am i supposed to am i allowed to swear you're yeah but you're going to rehost this on your site so whatever you say (laughs) it's going to have to be bleeped out by you if you're going to repost this so yeah (laughs) (laughs) yeah we try not to like i don't try to cuss too much because i don't want it to turn into i know you've heard of these podcasts where every other word Mm-hmm. is is the f word or the s word and it just it's it's after a while you're just like okay i'm tired of hearing this it's it's <laughs> it's grating and it's like i used to listen over again yeah i could not i could not stand listening to my some of my older videos on youtube so i was actually taking a, a you know an effort to try to calm down my um cursing and I, it worked so well that you know you know, some ex punk rocker put me on his radio show. Um, (laughs) so, so what that's worth. Um, yeah, but you said that you were a yak farmer. That's interesting. Oh yeah. (laughs) What, how, how does one get into yak farming? Uh, man, you gotta be a nonconformist and somebody wants to put Uh, themselves. An arco calf (laughs) one. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) Uh, I I wanted to get into agriculture because I hated school. I was like, I don't I don't want to do anything that has to that I have to go to school for. I was going to be a lawyer, but I was like, then I, I have to go for like seven years in school to do that. I don't want to do that anymore. I'm sick of being in here anyway. Let's just finish high school and do farming because my family has land. Right, we've got mm. something like 40 acres out here, so I have more than enough to use. Free capital. So I decided, yeah, that's right. I'm part of the upper 99 percent man probably the part of the three percent here because of this land probably shouldn't say that anyway uh, everybody so in I america is part of the one percent i'm sorry they are that's <laughs> yeah it's true um uh, so i decided i wanted to be in agriculture and i didn't want to raise cattle and i didn't really like pigs i hate sheep sheep are the worst animals ever if you raise sheep I, i'm sorry i'm really sorry i don't know what happened to you but uh I decided I, somehow I found yaks. I think it, I got the idea from this book. There's some book where they drank yak milk or they had yak butter tea because this lady had a bunch of weird animals in her house. One of them was a yak. That's probably where I got the idea. I, I'm, I'm totally. I'm not sure, but uh, I started looking into them. I found that there was a guy who had a very large uh, ranch out in Bend, Oregon. That's uh, in east. It's kind of central Oregon. I'm on the western Oregon, in the Willamette Valley. So I, just, I decided, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get into this thing. So I started researching it, and my dad and I are planning on how to build fences. And uh, we saw that the guy in Bend was having an auction. So we're like, well, we should check it out, see what prices are, and see what you know all the yaks are going for. So we went out there, and we uh, this, they started going real cheap because nobody wants yaks. It's, there's no market for yaks. There's some market for meat. And you can you can definitely sell the meat, but nobody wants an actual yak. Mm-hmm. You know, there were probably three people there bidding on yaks. The rest of them were for for buffalo. So I looked at my dad. I'm like, dude, we got to get into this now. This is the best opportunity. These things are going for 400 bucks a head, and they're usually about 1,200 a head. So I'm like, I got to do this. And he's like, No, your mom's never gonna let us do it. So he's like, But I'm like, oh, Come on, come on, come on. And my dad's like, Well, if I call your mom, she's gonna say no. But if you call her, maybe she'll say yes. So I call her. I'm like, "Hey, mom, can we get two yaks? We're just only gonna get two. And uh, we ended up coming back with four. <laughs> uh, two of them, two of them being pregnant, and then we just threw them out in the field. And uh, then I got started, and it's been, I guess, about a year and a half. Not a year and a half, but about a year mm. now. That's 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 
st- insanely interesting. Um, <laughs> I still can't get over like like what I'm like. like oh yeah, I'm doing a podcast. Um, now you said like, they were like what four hundred uh, four hundred pounds each. Like what what is that in like relation to a cow and how much per pound do you have uh, meat do you um, get off of those things and like what, what's like I meant four hundred dollars a head. Well, that's so what like, that's what I mean. I, like, but I mean for like, each yak. But how how much like if you were buying like a cow for four hundred oh. dollars, mm. like what would your turnaround be? That's like in comparison. That's still pretty cheap. <laughs> I think that you can get uh I think you can get a pretty young calf for four hundred dollars, uh for a regular cattle. Uh, I'm not totally sure. But a cow will probably yield about Oh, I don't know my hanging weight. I don't know all the weights, but well, um, not the weight, but I mean, like how much relative, like oh, how much turn around, like you're okay, slaughter okay. the thing and get the meat from roughly. And I'm not asking I for exact not, figures. Like I don't, I'm not, I'm not trying to like start sure. a farm here. I don't think it's really feasible <laughs> where I live. Maybe if I go up north where Clive and Bundy lives, but definitely not here in the in the <laughs> valley. It's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> I would not buy a, a a yearling cow for less than or for more than nine hundred bucks probably. Wow! So that's that's probably what you could get off live for if you're selling an animal on the hoof. But if you butcher it, you could. I don't know. You could <laughs> probably get around two thousand bucks wow. for uh, a grass-fed cattle beef, and then a yak you can get. Because yak's a bit more expensive, it's quite a bit more expensive than grass-fed beef. If you're if you're selling it right, I'm matching prices, so I should get about. I think I calculated it's around uh, got about 300 pounds of meat off this yak. He was I don't know. He was two years old, and uh, I should be making around 2,500 off him if I sell all the meat. Hmm, that's not bad. No, it's not. It's, it's really still thing as hell. Like, I don't understand. <laughs> like yaks, that's such an interesting. And, yeah, yeah. And if people don't know what a yak is, it's it's basically a small, hairy cattle with very large horns, and uh, they're they're beautiful animals. They have a really long coat, which looks kind of like a skirt. And if you groom them really nice, they're just the most beautiful creatures in the world. I think, and. Uh, they're typically black, but you can get them from white and black. And then there's some people who will cross breed with cattle. You get some other different colors. Uh, they, they there's, there's, if you don't want to talk about liberty drama, we can talk about yak drama <laughs> with genetics. <laughs> God, it's so crazy. Uh, you can cross breed them. Is it like a mule thing or like crossing a horse? With yeah. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like that. that. You work? can cross breed them with buffalo or well, <laughs> you uh, buffalo. You think it worked? <laughs> <laughs> they so what you have to do is you have to raise a yak with whichever animal you're going to crossbreed it with. So, but it's, it's usually is a bull that you raise with the animals, and then they will breed with that species. And then you'll get a hybrid. Uh, they're like yakalos or the yak and buffalo, and I don't know what the cattle yak cross is called, <laughs> but they're usually sterile. I, there's some weird oh, okay. stuff where the males aren't or the females aren't or something. I don't know. It's it's weird. But so if you cross kind of like them, the they thing. can grow faster. Yeah, it's kind of like mules; like they they can't breed. You just you know made a horse and donkey, and that's it. That's the end of the line. Well, that's that's not true. They, one of the genders is not sterile, but with donkeys, I believe it's both. Okay. All right. Yeah. So yeah. Um, and and you can sell the meat, right? Do, is there a market for yeah. the meat, or is like can yeah? I know there's a there's a market for bison burgers. Like I'll I'll see that in the store, but I've never seen yak meat. And if I did, I'd, I'd be definitely interested in trying that. But like <laughs> yak meat, uh, is that that's a thing? Oh yeah, it's definitely a thing. Um, it's sim. Excuse me. It's very similar to buffalo and its health benefits that has lower cholesterol and it's it's very lean meat especially because most yaks are primarily grass fed unlike cattle which are usually grain fed yeah corn but this, yeah but so yaks are grass fed beef is very expensive uh, yak meat is even more expensive and people want it people do buy it yak burgers are delicious if you like rare meat then you're 
going to like yak because it, it holds a lot of juice, but it's very lean. So it, it cooks nicely, and uh, you, you, but you can't really have it when it's well done because it just dries out. Mm. But if you like it rare, then it's delicious. Well, if, if, you, eat, if you eat steak well done, you're, you're not eating steak. You're eating <laughs> leather, no matter if it's beef or no matter how marbled the beef is. Like, people who ask for, for, for well done need to leave. You need to go now. <laughs> Real people are here talking. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm one of those people. Like, I want it bloody. Like rare. Like, I, like. I think there's even a level above that called blue rare. It's, it's blue tempting. Rare. It's just yeah. raw. It's it's Put it's, in the it's basically flame seconds. kissed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like everything rare or raw. Uh, I, don't, I don't think I've ever had beef raw. I, I've heard people say that they've been to like Asian restaurants where they serve raw beef. Uh, I think mm. I've actually had like raw Kobe beef once at a, at a sushi restaurant, but it was, you know, once that's all you could really afford. <laughs> you know, I'm not rich. Oh yeah. Yeah. But it, it, it was, it was amazing. Yeah. But yeah, uh, rare is definitely the way to go. And, uh, yeah, I, I don't really see it out here too often. I really don't. <laughs> it's like, no, especially not in Nevada. Nobody wants to raise yaks in the desert. <laughs> It's it, there's not enough people for it to really be shipped anywhere, you know. There's just mm-hmm. not very many people raising them. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, here, everything yeah. is about seafood, and you would expect being mm. in the middle of the desert that you would not have <laughs> seafood. No, 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 no. They have this logistical like uh, magic that I don't know how it happens, but it's cheaper to buy shrimp here in Vegas than it is to buy it in. LA or anywhere near the beach. Uh, <laughs> and they have like this really neat system worked out because like Vegas is like, like the, I think just in Las Vegas alone, like they consume more shrimp than any other city, uh, it, you know, in, in the, across the country. I think they, I think they said it was something like six or 60 tons per day of shrimp that Ooh. Las Vegas goes through. So they have like this, this really sophisticated logistical system to bring fresh seafood here all the time. The seafood's always great. And uh, I like to buy like the big blue crab or the small blue crabs and then just buy a big bag of them and just throw them in the, in the boiler. Super cheap. Super, super cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Lobster's cheap here. But no yaks. No yaks. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, we have to go to the coast to get ours, mm. get nice crabs. Yeah, there's actually a market for that. Like, do, is it like a? It's so you, they have yak burgers and yak steaks. Is there anything else like people make yak stew? Oh yeah, yeah. I actually uh, I sold some stew meat to a lady, and she made a what she said was a great stew out of the stew meat. But yeah, there are a lot of different cuts. You get the same cuts off of uh, yak that you would a, a cow. So there's ground beef, there's roasts, there's top sirloin, there's some very nice steak cuts. And uh, there's, you know, anything you can, you want. You can get heart. You can get liver. Uh, I'm not into eating liver. I think that's. You're missing out. I don't out. like to eat. I don't know, man. It's <laughs> You're like missing a out. Filter. No, you cook it. Saute it up with some onions. There you go, man. Gold mm, right there. Someday, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, I've never heard anyone say, mm, I've had a yum, yummy te- yak burger. I mean, and I hang out with people who <laughs> like to eat like weird eccentric foods all the time. And I've never heard anybody say that they ate yak or drank yak butter tea. Uh, have you tried that yet? <laughs> I know you mentioned that earlier. No. Yeah, I haven't. I, I haven't been able to milk the yaks. There are people who say they do milk yaks for their own consumption here in the States, but. As far as I know, there are no commercial yak dairies in <laughs> anywhere but Asia. Maybe Switzerland. I think I heard rumors of it, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm sure there would be a huge market for the cheese, though. Yeah, and it's disappointing that nobody's done it. I would like to be the first. I'm shooting for that, but it's become very, very difficult. The government gets in your way. If you want to be producing any sort of food product, wherever they can, it seems, and dairies especially. But, yeah, nobody nobody sells yak milk. And I've had people tell me they would buy yak cheese for $40 a pound, Wow, which is amazing, right? And it's, it's disappointing that nobody's doing it, but that just means that if I get to be the first, I'm famous. 
Yeah, I definitely want to try some Yak Brie. That's for sure. <laughs> Sign yeah. me up for Yak Brie. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. But 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 you were saying um, on Freedom Fiends that the 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 FDA or the USDA doesn't bother you with yaks like they would if you were selling cows, but they do. They would if you had dairy. How? how? Really? Yeah, it's it's interesting where the USDA draws its lines, but for meat. The USDA has a certain class of animals. I don't remember all their legal mumbo jumbo for what they call everything, but they have uh, animals that they regulate, which are your standard livestock usually, where you have your chickens, your swine, and your cows, and there's probably some others in there. And then they have USDA exempt animals, which I you know, there's some specific term for them that they use, but they don't regulate them at all. You only have to you you get regulated by your state agency usually. So I got I got regulated by the Oregon Department of Agriculture, but not the United States Department of Agriculture. That's so bizarre. And so what that means, yeah. So what that means, if your animal is USDA exempt, like I think ducks are as well, and alpaca are, you can slaughter the animal at a custom slaughtering facility, which are usually only regulated by your state agency. And then you can sell if you have the right, you know, licensing from your um, state agency if they're USDA exempt. But if they are USDA regulated, then you have to take them to a special slaughtering facility and packaging facility where they have to be inspected by USDA inspector. And so you're saying that there's slaughterhouses that aren't regulated. Yes. Yeah, wow. I call them custom slaughter facilities. Liberty! So, uh-huh. <laughs> so I, I assume you take it there, so I'm sure it's a lot cheaper. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Uh, have you, 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 you said that you sold some yak meat already, haven't you? I have. I've sold, uh, I haven't been pushing it enough. Uh, there's just been things that have been, been priorities on the, on the farm front than selling. But yeah, I have sold meat and I am in business. And if you want me in, I, people want me to ship it. I'm skeptical, but everybody's like, nah, dry ice, you can do it. So I'll have to look into that and uh, I'll make the customers pay for shipping. Oh, but, of course. Um, yeah, if you want yak me, come find me. Oh. I, actually, I don't think our website's up yet, but you can find the Hazleton Farms Facebook page. Yeah, well, you you you, you have a you have a podcast. I'm sure that you could link it on there later, right? Yeah. Okay, so yes. why don't you plug you can that contact now? Me there. <laughs> yeah, my podcast is the Narco Yakitalism podcast. You can find uh, us at an yakcom If you look up Nick Hazleton. N i c k h a z e l t o n. You will find me. I am the most famous Nick Hazelton in the world. <laughs> that, at, at least on the internet, I am. Yeah, and, uh, uh, you'll find the website immediately. Yeah, I'm the second most famous Jim Jesus. Second <laughs> most. Uh, there's one other guy, and it's a rapper. And apparently, that's where I got my name from. Like, um, I was going to ask you that. Okay, so like my my name came from like I had a I used to smoke weed. And I had a, had a, had a, had a pot dealer who's, who actually was a friend, and then he became a pot dealer. So it wasn't like, oh, he's not really your friend. No, actually, he was. Uh, and um, we were calling him up one day, and uh, he, he answered the phone. He was like, Internet Jim Jesus, because there's a rapper named Telephone Jim Jesus, and he was like a, a fan of him. <laughs> and so he started calling me Internet Jim Jesus, and it was on speakerphone with all my friends around when, <laughs> when, I, when I answered the phone. So... Everybody started calling me Internet Jim Jesus from then on, and they just shortened to Jim Jesus. And it's a name that I haven't been able to shake. Uh, and, I, 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 and I actually like it. It's, and and yeah, there's another it. level to that, too. But, uh, you know, everybody, like even my friends call me Jim Jesus. Like my real life friends, when they see me, they don't call me Jim Alexander <laughs> anymore. And um, so I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to keep it anyway. And, you know, I'll just cut the internet part off so that way, you know, there's, there's a, a clear distinction between the two. Um, mm-hmm. But anyways, yeah, it's not like I'm stealing the name. Someone else stole it for him or stole it for me. Um, so it was stolen. But what I really like about it is anytime I get in a conversation with someone on the Internet, especially with like atheists uh, or even Christians, too, is that they immediately assume that you're a Christian because you have Jesus in the name. 
And they'll, if they're a Christian, they'll be upset. Like, you know, what kind of a Christian are you saying these terrible things? <laughs> or why would you include J- Jesus in your name if you're, you know if you're such a good Christian? And I'm like, well, you're assuming that I am. <laughs> Ass, assuming. And then the other the other thing is the atheist who just automatically assume you're a dumb Christian because you disagree with them. And then you're like, actually, no, I'm I'm an atheist. And I'll link him to a video that I did where I'm denouncing. Christianity is like, why didn't you even like bother looking on my site <laughs> before just you just assume it basic mm-hmm. research. It was like the second video on my YouTube channel. So I just love doing that. And it usually kind of helps me weed out the morons who I'm talking to. Yeah. So they automatically assume that it's like, well, you know, if you're going to assume that, I don't know what else you're going to just assume about me just based on ignit. For all you know, I could be Jim Jesus and that could be my actual legal name. You know, I could be Hispanic <laughs> for all you know, but yeah. <laughs> But anyways, yeah. So yeah, get a little history about my name. <laughs> I'm sure yeah, someone was dying this, to hear this, about it. I was actually. I, I've been okay. curious. I've been meaning to ask you that because there's this new rapper. He just emerged. He's he's terrible. Oh, I heard about uh, him. Slim Jesus. Mm-hmm. And so I just look, googled your name, and it says, "Did you mean Slim Jesus?" <laughs> yeah, they actually and call him like Slim. Yeah, I think it comes up as Slim or Slim Jim Jesus sometimes. And I'm like, <laughs> what? So, anyways, like now that you search my name, Jesus. it's like it, usually the top three listings are Telephone Jim Jesus, which is the the first rapper, and then me, and then Slim Jim Jesus, and he's starting to gain popularity. And I'm like, why? Like it, he's not like so bad that it's good, like young, lean, like intentionally bad, good. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just bad, <laughs> just terrible. Yeah, I don't, I can't stand him. Yeah, Joel Time is not fantastic. <laughs> it's <laughs> All around, the guy's just not great. No, I, I I've that. I've listened to like one th- like a partial of it, of that video, and I was like, Ugh. I think I should just consider changing my name now. <laughs> no, I had it first. I I rightfully homesteaded that's, it. That's my word. <laughs> that's our word. <laughs> so yeah, yaks. Um. So anyways, uh, my parents had visited Alaska when i was just coming out of high school or so and when they uh when they came back they actually had like sent um salmon that they had mailed Mm. over and it was in like a thing with dry ice and it was in a it was like they have like a a special delivery for perishables Mm. and yeah they definitely checked that out and it was a lot more expensive you know than having buying you know Alaskan shrimp from a from a store, but it was you know fresh. Like it came in, like they sent it. We yeah. got it the next day, and like it beat them home. Oh wow! On the plane, That's and they had awesome. a direct, yeah, they had a direct flight uh, back, or well, at least to L.A. And it still beat them home, and it was like wow. And uh, oh, excuse me, but um, yeah. So uh, so I mean the options there, and I'm really interested in trying a yak burger and a yak steak. Uh, and I just got over my stupid paleo, not the paleo, uh, stupid, uh, uh, pescatarian. Oh, good. Thing. Oh, I didn't, you didn't hear about that already. No, I didn't know that. I was oh. going to make fun of you, but I keep forgetting. It. <laughs> okay. You might as well go ahead. Go ahead. Me. What was, what was wrong? <laughs> was so wrong about it. So I, I, I just hate anything that people that don't eat meat. I think it's disgusting. I, uh, I've unfortunately, most of the girls that I've dated have been pescatarians. I don't know why, right? I, and some of it, most of them, actually, one of them was for ethical reasons, and that, you know, I didn't go over well. Ew. But it's just, yeah, it's just gross. It's just a gross place. I can't think of anything clever off the top of my head, but uh, <laughs> no, it's disgusting. Not eating meat. It's not good for you. Yeah. Eat meat. Yeah. Animal yeah. fat. Yeah, it's good. It's good for you. Um, but th- the point was, it was just kind of teaching me to like start incorporating more vegetables into my diet and try to lose a little bit of weight in the mm-hmm. process. Didn't work. Um, I actually gained weight. Um, <laughs> not only did I gain weight, I um, mm-hmm. like it, like I was having like because I was like like okay, so I'm not eating as much meat. Um, you know, and fish can can either be really cheap or really expensive. Um, depending on what you're getting, like if I'm getting fresh tilapia, it's cheap, but if I'm getting packaged tilapia or pre-cooked something or anything like that, it's way too expensive. So you end up having to go and get fresh fish all the time. And that costs money with gas. Cause you know, I don't have a fish market right next to me. It's like over like halfway across town. 
the Asian fish markets. And I was just like, okay, so I'm going to incorporate a lot more beans in my diet. And for some reason, my body just doesn't handle beans right. And mm -hmm. to make it a little bit more PG so you have less stuff to edit out, uh, I was basically – I actually had – there was a couple days, uh, different days spread out, uh, about almost a whole day where I couldn't even get out of bed because I felt that if I stood up – um, the gas would just build up inside of me <laughs> and it was just, it was just causing so much pain. I just was laying in bed, passing gas <laughs> the entire day in pain. And I was like, yeah, I can't, I can't do this anymore. My, I'm just way too sensitive to bean protein. And uh, they said that it gets better over time. And if you try like <laughs> seeds like Beano, it helps. And no, it doesn't. Not with me. I guess it's cause I'm Irish and Irish need <laughs> potatoes. So yeah, no, potatoes. not, not beans. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't like beans, and that for that reason, uh, I, I'm skeptical of anybody who says oh, I do it for health reasons. You know, when they become vegetarian or something, because uh, I, I, it's just not, it's not that healthy. You know, soy is not really good for you, and beans are, you know, I don't think people are really made. I, I'm, I don't know anything about science, so don't quote me on this. Like, I'm I'm just saying, I, I think this is true. I probably read it on the internet somewhere. Uh, probably listened to a, a podcast or maybe watched a YouTube video about it. Uh, but there was a... But uh, no, no, yeah, never mind. I'm totally losing myself. <laughs> you know, well, I'm trying to figure <laughs> out where I found this. That's the but law no, works, it, man. <laughs> yeah, that's <parts>. right. <laughs> <laughs> beans for your mind but um i think you're talking about no, yeah there's it's a, the legumes uh, right yeah you're not, it's not good to you're not really meant to digest that sort of thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think you're talking about there's a um lady by i can't remember her name her name escaped she has a really weird name it's Lori something and she's she wrote a book called the vegetarian myth and she's actually so like she's still on the ethical stances of veganism but she realizes that it's not it's not something you can do like it's not mm. it's not healthy <clears throat> yeah it's not healthy it's not practical you know people get sick from it and she got really sick from from being a vegan but she still holds on to that vegan left wing lifestyle yeah but but uh. she she just can't practice it so she eats so she's like she went to the other side so now she's like making bone broth uh <laughs> you know like <laughs> eating raw organ meat and all this other stuff and she's just like yeah it's you know it's the most it's the best food for you like and okay and she's a really interesting person yeah and I, I i knew of this going in too but i was like okay that's why i'm gonna go pescatarian so at least i still have that animal protein you know that i'm mm -hmm. getting you know and i'm there yeah, i can eat raw fish and uh, oh i love sushi but yeah it just didn't work out for me i'm still gonna eat more seafood i still love seafood more but yeah i mean it is good to to not eat too much meat right mm -hmm. it's it's you gotta have everything in moderation to an extent i probably eat too much meat and i'm young though so i can i can do that for a while yeah we'll i see can. how when it catches up to me <laughs> My metabolism is way too low, <laughs> and I don't get enough exercise because it's like I'm working, I'm recording, and then it's just like by the time I'm done, I'm like, I don't want to th throw around a kettlebell in my living room. I'm going to bed. <laughs> so I just, by, I just, by the time I yeah. just forget, and I eat a lot of beans and then, <laughs> and then get become like a, that, that girl from uh, uh, Willy Wonka. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and just yeah, roll around in bed that. and then just you know just want to die but um and then i then i wake up and i'm fatter and i'm like it's i like, thought this was God. supposed to be healthier like, i'm eating <laughs> less fat how is this working so yeah and not only that I, uh, but it's like if if you're out and about there's not a lot of pescatarian options for you you have like half of the fast food chains will not cater to you uh, a lot of the restaurants won't cater to you and if it is it's like you have to pick off the vegetarian menu it's like we have steak and salad that's it like not even like a, yeah. like a tuna steak here no no all right i'm done with this diet <laughs> bring yeah, on the steak they, i think that in oregon um you know we're all a bunch of hippie vegans living in the woods Especially Portland, uh, you can easily find that. But yeah, anywhere else other than Oregon, probably not. 
90s are live in the uh, yeah. in Portland, right? Yeah. 90s are live. Yeah, that's what I think of Portland. <laughs> like I thought of that. It is Portland. exactly the show. Yeah. <laughs> it really is. Portlandia is a documentary. Yeah. And I thought it's, that it's long hilarious. before. Yeah, I thought that long before <laughs> <laughs> that show even came out or was even thought of. Or before either of them were or one of them was on SNL. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So how is life in Oregon? You're not even near Portland, are you? How I don't know. Uh, I'm about two you, hours right? away from okay. Portland. Yeah. <laughs> no, I put out most of where I am on the online. Now you can easily find it because I have the farm Facebook page. Mm. Uh, I think I have like the address on there. Uh, so come and find me. The yaks will protect me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but I want people to come out to the farm and see it, right? So I have to put it out there. Um, oh, and so, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't remember what I was going to say. No oh, way. okay. So you're not going to cool. do the world tour on the back of a yak all the way out to New Hampshire, uh, carrying frozen yak meat for Ooh. for yak burgers for pork fest. I right? would for Bitcoin. I would love to do that if I could get enough dry ice. I think that uh, I could probably maybe pay off half of the trip just by selling it there. <laughs> I could probably sell it to uh, everybody for super expensive prices since it's bitcoin and a narco yaks right yeah you could well you could you could do what my parents did and then like you could ride out there and have your family or whatever send it out like a day before you expect to get there and there you go yeah Yeah, and then i can i can ship it to the the nearest like uh, maybe like a couple minutes away i'll pick it up and then pretend i brought it there (laughs) from oregon (laughs) <laughs> it could work and then you just do that whole like thing like oh i'm making a trick <laughs> all the way to pork <laughs> fest help me <laughs> yeah go fund me yeah sponsor me sponsor me 10 cents a mile <laughs> <laughs> hashtag please donate <laughs> by the way your ha- your yeah. donate links are going to be in the show notes by the way so <laughs> right, good good <laughs> so anyways have you did you watch the uh the democratic debate did you get to see that fun <laughs> thing yeah i did i did i did, i missed like the first 15 minutes i didn't even know it was on and then i saw somebody post about it. i was like oh i should probably watch that this is gonna be funny <laughs> i fell asleep like exactly for like 15 scary. minutes in the middle like i ended up like passing out like <sighs> And then I woke up like, oh. You didn't miss much. Yeah, I, apparently I didn't. Because everything that they're talking about, like on the news, I remember seeing. So, anyways, what did you yeah. think about it? How, how did that go over um, with you? Honest, honestly, I was a little bit, I didn't enjoy it as much as the Republican debates. I think that Donald Trump is just hilarious and everybody on there is just crazy. I, I find conservatism just funny while I find uh, the modern day liberalism kind of scary. I think that uh, Bernie Sanders is is ridiculous, right? All of them are just crazy. My favorite part, though, was when uh, oh, who was it? Like, the, uh, isn't his name Webb? They yeah. asked him what his uh, most his favorite enemy he's made. Was, oh, the guy I shot in Vietnam. It's like, oh God, <laughs> <laughs> really? In the Democratic debate. Yeah, he was actually but, bragging hey. about the people that he killed. And what's interesting is there was a news article that came out afterwards saying, like, actually, Jim Webb actually killed a bunch of people in Vietnam. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Uh, that's just, I don't know. I don't think that's something I would be uh, proud of. And I, I my grandfather was a, was a veteran in World War II, and I, he was not proud of uh, anything that happened in the war. Yeah, so, but I don't know. He I think that, that's pretty sick. I think out of all of them, I think that he was like the most reasonable. Like he was talking about yeah. like gun gun ownership being a good thing, and I was like, wait, this is this this, this oh. is the Democrats, right? This is the Democrats, <laughs> the ones that were just just five seconds ago bragging about what their the NRA hated them for. Like, oh, they mm-hmm. they gave me a mm-hmm. D minus. Well, oh yeah, well they gave me an F. So f you you know <laughs> like, <laughs> like that's what they were bragging about the whole time, and I'm like, really. How, how, how much of a gun grabber you are. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. I yeah. don't, it's, it's an interesting race, I guess. You know, I don't, I don't care who wins. Either way, it's going to be terrible and nothing's really going to change. I'm, I'm a little bit worried that uh, things will happen a little bit more quickly if uh, 
Sanders wins, but I don't think he will. It's just doesn't. It's not likely. I disagree. I actually think really? that I think that if 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 anybody were to get into office, at least out of the main contenders, I mean, like if I had my druthers, it'd probably be Rand because he's a little bit better on trade. But that's about mm-hmm. it. Uh, <laughs> but but, um, <laughs> but I mean, like I mean, if you think about Bernie Sanders. You have the Democratic Party, which is a, a large tent, and he's part of the firebrands, right? He's part of the the very extreme left, which is basically just him, uh, you know, and maybe uh, I can't even think of them anymore. Most of them are gone now. Kucinich is gone. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I can't even think of them. Most of them are gone now. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, it's a very, very small minority of the firebrands, and he represents that that minority. And then the rest of them, the, of all the different camps, really don't like that. Um, so you have opposition within the own party, and then you know the Dem- uh, the Republicans are not going to give him the time of day. You're a socialist. Get out of my face. Um, and so if anything that he brings to the table, Congress is not going to pass. House is not going to pass, especially if it's a Republican House and a Republican Senate, which mm-hmm. it will be. Yeah. He's going to be largely ineffective, and he's just going to be able to just use his bully pulpit, and no one's going to care. Like, well, who cares? You're not going to be able to get anything passed anyway. He's like, we're going to give free tuition to college, and <laughs> everyone's going to like it. And it, I don't understand why college costs more than regular car <laughs> loans. I mean, it, oh, I, I guess you can't really take back someone's education unless you take their brain out and you could take their car or house as collateral. But I, it doesn't make any sense. And shut up about the damn emails. Like, <laughs> it was just insane. That is interesting. I didn't think about that. Yeah. So I, I've been kind of on this thing like, eh, maybe out of all of them, he would be the least effective. And, I, and I'm a big fan of gridlock. I love gridlock. Like right now we're having a bit of gridlock and it's not as bad as Obama's first term, right? Cause Obama's first mm-hmm. term, that's when we got all the really nasty stuff. Cause the Democrats were helping him pass pretty much anything. Uh, when, when George Bush had a Republican house, he, they, I think they, there was actually a single, um, like in his first term, there wasn't a single veto that he ever wrote, which is scary. I mean, he, everything that the Congress passed, he, yeah, he yeah. signed into law. That's scary. Yeah. So, I mean, that's interesting. Yeah. I didn't think about that. I, uh, I, I wonder what the social ramifications are that for if the socialist won, right? And what would play out from him not being very effective, right? Would that m- turn people off from socialist ideas or would it strengthen them or you know what do you what do you think about that I don't, i'm not sure uh, this is a good questions i mean yeah I don't know. Um, i'm not sure if someone was being sarcastic and i really i don't really follow european politics but it seems like he was saying that in europe socialists usually get voted out their first term like after their first term that's like all right that was a bad idea all right let's just bring back the regular liberals or, or conservatives what they would what we would call them here uh, hardly, uh, or they're you know they're kind of like labor type type thing, and they just said like that was a bad idea, and then when things get bad again, they go okay, let's try the socialist do it again, <laughs> but yeah. one more time, ah, uh, that didn't work. All right, next one. <laughs> yeah, I thought that all the European nations were socialist. Yeah, they have like a lot of socialist stuff, but a lot of them are kind of like abandoning that now. Um, a lot of the Nordic yeah, countries, know, yeah. Yeah, people usually like to, like, liberals like to use it as like, oh, Norway has a fantastic education. It says, I don't know anything about Norway. Yeah. but <laughs> and, and they use Germany, actually. We have a German exchange student, so I've, I've heard stuff about Germany a lot recently. And uh, it's not true about Germans' ed- free education system being brilliant, right? There are people, the, the street sweepers have master's degrees. And it just, it, <laughs> it's not that great. Yeah, it's because they have that free college education, and it's that's that right. same thing. Where if you have free education, it's going to be almost mandatory. Like you need you need at least a GED to flip a burger, you know, and in, mm-hmm. in, at least where I'm at, at least on the West Coast, that's what I, that's what I remember. Like when I was young, not if I you're wanted, raising yaks. Oh, that's true. But you when you drop out of high school and raise yaks, when when I was in the high school, <laughs> it was like they had pretty much kind of almost started dissolving the the work program thing because it was like no employer wanted to hire you because 
you are you are expected to be paying too. You are, the the minimum wage was too high, even though we had like a reduced minimum wage for people under eighteen at the time. Um, it still was too much, and uh, no one wanted to hire us because what's what's the point? And then you're gonna your extra training on top of that, and then you have to call the school and make sure you had all your hours logged and everything for your school credits and stuff like that. It just wasn't worth it. So they just never hired anyone. So they were they were just basically saying like, don't even bother. Just wait till you're 18, get out of high school, and then when you get your GED or your a diploma, then you can then you can get a job. It's like, <laughs> yeah. And paper routes, uh, I tried getting a paper route when I was a kid, and they were like, no, we don't do that anymore <laughs> because of the minimum, you know, all that stuff, and it's too risky yeah. and too many lawsuits. So we just have adults drive around with with cars and throw them out the window, and that's how they do it now. But yeah. in California, like that was like one of the from the first things that i noticed like all my friends lost the paper routes and i couldn't get one so hmm. that's interesting yeah I, people complain about they yeah, can't get jobs and and yeah, i'm not hate saying that no it's easy to find a job and but because i live in a unique area mm-hmm. where you know, there hardly anybody that wants to to work but so i can get manual labor jobs easily it's minimum wage i can usually get paid more than minimum wage because no kids really want to do actual yard work anymore uh, anymore i don't know anything but nobody really actually works here and it's not a steady job but you pick up little weird odd jobs and that has not been hard for me because i built a a little bit of a reputation around here uh i worked for one guy once and he's and he absolutely loves me because he doesn't think kids can work at all and i don't think that's true but uh that's what he thought and so now i got people that want me to work for them all the time and i don't because i got other stuff i want to do but uh, if you can get out there and say, hey, I'll clean your yard, and you just do that for your neighbors it, as a kid, right? It's not mm-hmm. a good thing to, to work for as an adult if you're trying to support a family. Yeah, it but would work. if you want to make some side cash, then hey, it's not too hard. That's how I got my Super Nintendo was mowing people's yards. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And now then it became a thing like, oh, you got to hire a gardener. <laughs> like, ah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Poor kids, yeah. they, they, they have no clue. Just, they don't care. They're just sitting there playing with their their cell phones and could, sending each other damn could, emails. <laughs> <laughs> you could have just said your name was Jim Jesus, and they probably would have hired you. <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to drink my tea here, man. <laughs> my yak butter tea. Yeah. You're trying to make me. Ch- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm Jim Jesus. Uh, I'm here to uh, mow your yard. That's a very faky Hispanic accent. Oh. Yeah. Um, uh, no, no hobbling English. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yaks. Is there anything else interesting <laughs> about this it. yak thing? Of course there are. There's got to be everything oh, about yaks is so interesting. Wait, what's with the I dreadlocks? Can... What's with that? Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, the hair is absolutely phenomenal. Yaks are amazing creatures. You know, I can't stress that enough. The, I didn't talk really about the, the milk enough either. The, the milk is extraordinary. It's not just rare. You know, it has 11% butter fat a lot of the time, which is super high in fat. So it's delicious and it's super great for yogurt and cheese. That's basically yeah. it about the, the milk though. And then, so moving, yeah, the, the hair. They've got two layers of hair. Uh, some people say there's three. Uh, it's, it's weird. <laughs> but basically, they have the main layer, which is usually what you see is the long overcoat, which is water resistant. So, you know, it's for the rain. And then in the winter, they'll gray, they'll grow the other two layers. I think it's just one uh, where it's very similar to wool, but it's not like you can just brush it off. It just falls off in the spring and it clumps up into dreadlocks and they'll fall out on their own. And uh, some of them will stick in the longer coats and the longer layer of hair and it'll look really ugly but um you can pick those out and then you can sell that for a lot of money Uh, i think yes yak fiber is amazing it's uh got the microfiber consistency of cashmere a lot of the time and i think it's stronger than cashmere so microfiber consistency is based on microns right which is a very very small it's microscopic uh measurement of mm-hmm. distance right so they have a diameter that's very similar to cashmere which i believe cashmere is around 16 to 18 microns and yak is the same wow. you can get as little as 14 but it's, when you get lower into the lower microns it's uh 
easy to break. Uh, so it's not very strong fiber. So is there like a Led Zeppelin song about it or? <laughs> but, uh, I was like wondering, cause I was hearing like, like, why were you picking up these dreadlocks? <laughs> it didn't make any sense to me. And then I was like, this is no, this yeah. is all news. No, this is, it's amazing. It's, uh, I, I don't know my facts up on yaks anymore, but I have a podcast out there on, on my website somewhere. I think it's like episode 43 or something. I, I don't figure know. Figure it out. I'll put it in the show. Yeah. notes. It's somewhere. It's, I'll send a link to you, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, uh, yeah, but about yak fiber and, uh, it's very expensive. Sheep wool will usually go about, last time I checked, was 160 a pound uncarded, which means uh, carding is a certain process. But yak fiber is $4 an ounce. Sorry, it's an ounce, uh, one, $1.60 an ounce. Uh, why not? I don't know. I don't know if it's a pound or an ounce, but I'm assuming <laughs> it's an ounce. Because uh, uh, hair is very light. So wool is about $1.60 an ounce uncarded, and yak is $4 an ounce uncarded. Mm. And then carded yak or sheep is about $4 an ounce, I think, and then yak is $16 an ounce. And would you just sell so it on eBay? Or? I could sell it anywhere. I've got a lady, actually. I've worked out a deal. She's going to... She She's a fiber... She has some... She works with some company, and she has fiber animals like llamas and alpacas and sheep, uh, but she's going to buy all of it for me. <laughs> Um, so I don't have even have to deal with marketing that, um, which is just a fantastic opportunity. So you just go out, but you're just going to go out there and just shave, shave the yaks like you do with a sheep or. And you they, don't have to shave them. You just brush them. Like take one, you know, do you know dog brushes where you kind of just brush the dog when it's shedding and it just, yeah. so the hair so, comes out? So like basically like all the, all this cat hair that I've been saving up, if, if it was yes. a yak instead, I could be pulling in some coin then, right? That's right. Cat, I'm getting rid of you. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I can fit a yak in here, but I can try. No, probably not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Management would be angry. You could, uh, you could make yak veal. Just leave it in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love nihilism. <laughs> you can't say objectively that was a good thing to do, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yay, Veal. <laughs> yeah, but I, I didn't know that there was like a market for yak hair. That's weird. And considering that I've even listened to most of the podcasts on your thing, I still didn't catch that one. And I remember you yeah, were saying something actually, about like picking up dreadlocks. And I made a joke about it on, on the Lalbert site, on your bio. <laughs> I was like, uh, okay, maybe there actually oh, is yeah. a use for this thing. <laughs> um. It's actually amazing. There, people import yak fiber from China, and, and you know that you can buy it on like uh, what's the Chinese version of Amazon? That, uh, eBay. <laughs> I can't remember. It's, Every time I go to eBay, uh, like e like I'll search for something, and I always get the cheap Chinese knockoffs first for like <laughs> one tenth of the price, and I'm like, I don't know. But it takes ten ten it's weeks Alibaba. to get here. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But people do want it. Yeah, there's there's a market for yaks. It's a fantastic niche to be in right now. We'll see how long the fad lasts. Fad, I don't know. It's not a fad. This stuff is great. Yeah, I'm I'm still dying. To, oh, I still want to get a steak. <laughs> I don't know if I it's, want to yeah, chip out I'll, that. I'll, You'll mail I'll, me some oh, for free? Into... Oh, thank you so much. That's, that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I want to bring you on the podcast more. With the workout deal, like every podcast you do, you have to send me beef, <laughs> yak beef. <laughs> I'm just joking, but uh, yeah, but uh, if you figure out how to do that, I definitely will probably save a little bit of coin. I definitely need to get a new computer, mm -hmm. but uh, after that, then we'll do yak meat, and by then you'll figure it it's out. Only sure. a, it's only $20 a it's only $20 a pound for a steak, <laughs> yeah, plus shipping. I, <laughs> and dry yeah. ice and packaging. <laughs> dry ice, that's right. Yeah. Uh, this is why this is why we need to take from the one percent to make sure that America <laughs> gets plenty of yak meat. The yak meat is good, it's lean for you. And I, I have a feeling that like <laughs> the basically like Donald Trump and Bernie Sanders are like long lost twins. 
that were separated at birth. Yeah. That, or on identical twins. But <laughs> they were separated at birth. They were, <laughs> they're almost the same person. They're just talking on the other side of the political spectrum. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> uh, and they agree with a lot of you. A lot too. They also agree on immigration, which I thought was interesting. <laughs> Bernie Sanders wants to build a wall. Uh, oh, pretty much. Uh, he said that uh, the open border policy is a Koch brothers' idea. <laughs> Let that sink in. It's a Koch brothers' idea. <laughs> that just hurts my head. I, I don't Koch understand brothers that. Fun, like funding Donald Trump. No, no, they wouldn't. They wouldn't fund Donald Trump either. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, I'm not surprised. They're funding uh, Rubio, though, right? Ah, they're funding pretty that. much everybody. I think who knows? Everybody, yeah, yeah. They're this probably is probably fun- not Trump because Sanders tr- secretly. Yeah, because Trump, he's got millions of dollars, <laughs> and he's just off the rails. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I don't know. But Tom Woods actually came out with a, a video and a and a book and. Um, it's it's just it's not even really a book. It's kind of like transcriptions of his some of his podcasts where he was talking about certain things that Bernie Sanders supports, either directly or you know just policies you know that he's that they've talked about on the podcast before. But he he raised an interesting question. It's like you know the United States, like if you, the way we see like the one percent here in America, like the way like the average working class or poor people look at like. You know Donald Trump and his mansion made out of gold, and we just see like, oh, that's just a terrible like, you know, exuberance of money, uh, you know, just gross overuse of money. Uh, the way we see that is the same way that like any other place in the world sees Americans, even even the lowest percent. Mm-hmm. It's like, so if we if we're saying that that's 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 unfair and they shouldn't have that, wouldn't we also say that you know that's unfair that we have the extravagance that we have the little minor extravagance that seems like that's what, that's what it looks like to them. You know, they're eating a bowl of rice a day, (laughs) you know, working all day for a bowl of rice a day, like Jill Biafra says. And, you know, they look at us and they're like, you know, Oh, they're, they're throwing away a whole pound of hamburger meat just because they didn't trust it in the freezer, you know? Yeah. Which would be unfathomable to them. So like, would it be justified for them to take money from us? I would say it if we're going to be consistent, absolutely. Yeah. But consistency isn't something they would really yeah. care about, right? This goes back no. to philosophy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. Like, what is exactly the philosophy of the social democrat? He's not a socialist, de- uh, this democratic socialist. He's a social democrat. Uh, he doesn't even know the difference. He doesn't even know what he is. Uh, but... <laughs> I mean, like, what is the philosophy behind that? It's just basically like whatever I don't like or whatever I don't have, I should have or whatever I don't have that they have, they should give to me. Is that what it is? That's, I think so. It's. I find it interesting. I don't think anybody other than um, anarcho-capitalists and libertarians have actually broken down the philosophy very, very far. I don't. I have yet to find a socialist that can explain their philosophy and build it off of axioms. So I don't know, man. Yeah. I don't think that's that's one of my things. Is that's why I talk about philosophy. Is I don't, I don't think anybody knows what they're talking about. <laughs> and the reason why is that they have bad foundations. Yeah. People don't know what they're talking about in philosophy, and that's how we build it up, right? You build off of how we know things. That's epistemology and how reality works, and then we build off into ethics how we should act and then we build into politics how other people should act right so you you can't have a sound political philosophy without a sound metaphysical philosophy yeah and uh, i was talking to exomniverse um he has a youtube channel i'm sure you may have run into some of his videos on youtube i've heard of him okay um from you yeah he i don't know if i looked at him yeah he, he he's pretty much retired now uh at least from youtube um, but he was basically kind of like, he's, he's had a definite change of opinion when it comes to philosophy. Now, now he's basically of the opinion, like no one's going to figure this stuff out. Like f- they've been doing philosophy for thousands of years, you know, and everybody thinks that, you know, they, they figured most stuff out. Like Molyneux thinks that he's figured everything out, but he hasn't, and nobody has. <laughs> and it's just kind of like, mm-hmm. just pointless to even like try to try to figure out like some like 
objective truths that will solve everything. That's just an absurd position to, to go after. But it seems like they've kind of they think that they have it, but they don't. Like they're probably the least peop the least group of people that that have figured out is are these social democrats, these you know these uh, liberals, these conservatives. They just kind of like they kind of go with the wind, you know. Just you know they, they don't even have really consequentialist things. They just kind of say like it's unfair, uh, you know. I don't like this. Uh, you know. You know these they're coming in and taking our gerbs like. And, and none of it's true. <laughs> They're just like, you know, like just call names at each other. Like, and culture, let's just call everybody names. Um, I guess Raven does the same thing with the whole Watermelon Dre thing. I don't know if you saw that video, by the way. No, I don't, I don't know what that is. Okay. <laughs> I'll put a sh video in the show notes. You can watch it later. It's great. <laughs> but, yeah, just basically, just it's all just kind of like muckraking. Like, oh, I don't. You know, I don't like the way things work. So, you know, like, you know, it's 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 the moral that, you know, like, you know, everything goes the way I like it. And it just doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. yeah. It's disappointing. Anyways, uh, I think we're, she should probably wrap it up. It's been an hour. Uh, so where can they learn more about you and Yaks and all that stuff? You can learn more about me at an-yak.com and yak.com. If you look up Nick Hazleton, you'll find me. I'm the most famous Nick Hazleton. I think there's one LinkedIn profile that comes up, and that is not me. <laughs> but uh, you, you might be able to find me on Facebook. If you have mutual friends, I'll add you. Um, and you can find the Narco Yakitalism podcast at the website I listed and on Facebook. Um, a narco yakitalism podcast page and then we're also on itunes stitcher tune in podomatic and the liberty radio network so you can find us all on those things yeah. just as, about anywhere you can listen to a podcast i'm there yeah what's interesting is as of right now i'm banned from itunes we can't we can't get lulberts on itunes for some reason i was gonna I ask you i have about no that. reason i have no reason why to believe that maybe i need to talk to some people about this but anyways um, it, yeah. it, it also, the link is on the on the website, the Lulberts website. It's on the it's on the left hand side, and uh, yeah. yeah, and uh, I think that's I think that's about. Oh yeah, and the flag. We got, I got the flag. The, uh, the that's my hill. That's that's my purse. I don't know you, Bobby Hill flag. I, it finally came in the mail, and it's absolutely beautiful. And if you really want to get one, it's less than thirty bucks with shipping. It's gonna take them. <laughs> Could take about a month to get to you but you know it's totally worth it it came out fantastic um and they they already kind of know that you know i hand out this stuff for free so if you're interested go into that check out his podcast and until until next time uh i'm not gonna say mm -mm, nope nope <laughs> nope nope are you sick of government lackeys who say you didn't build that? Are you tired of elitists like Barack Obama and Al Gore taking credit for the web while trying to take over the web? Are you disgusted by experts whose concept of the internet is that it's a series of tubes? Take back the free market of computing by encouraging software developers to adopt the BIPCOT NoGov license. The BIPCOT NoGov license allows any use or modification except by governments. Go to bipcot.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango, dot org. For some reason in, the, in this country, and in a bunch of Western world, it's okay to just judge. Hey, this is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends Radio Show. Computer programmer Derek Slopey and I have created Fiend Phone. I'm using Fiend Phone right now to talk with and record one of my co-hosts in real time. Take it, Davi. Hey, this is Davi Barker, and I'm a thousand miles away from Michael, but we sound like we're in the same room. We sure do, Davi. So, Davi, please tell the nice people more about FiendPhone. FiendPhone is free, no-gov software that opens up a global world of possibilities for collaborative, high-quality, remote voice media production, and I'm digging it. People can try FiendPhone right now at FiendPhone.com, but we're also raising money to vastly improve FiendPhone and vastly improve independent talk media worldwide. So go to FiendPhone.com to help out. Who will build the audio roads? We will, with your help. That's FiendPhone.com, F-E-E-N-P-H-O-N-E.com, Foxtrot, Echo, Echo, November, Phone.com. FiendPhone, I never knew remote audio could be this good.